This is Learn From Others, where we interview a cross-section of successful individuals so you can learn from their experiences, achievements, and even their mistakes. We ask four questions that will educate and inspire. Greg Stanley will be your guide as we join our guests on a journey from adolescent daydreaming to success in today's world. Join us on this adventure as we learn from others together. Welcome to Learn From Others. We are live here at the American Sign Museum. This is Greg Stanley. I'm very excited to introduce our special guest, Jesse Sandman, which is the coolest name in the world. Jesse, thank you for taking us on your career journey. Thank you for having me. Well, before we find out what you're doing today, why don't we start at the very beginning and tell us what you wanted to be when you grew up. Yeah, when I wanted, uh, what I first wanted to be when I was growing up was a cartoonist. Um, I was one of those kids, spent my mornings on the weekends watching cartoons, and I was very interested in the process. I loved drawing. I loved the whole, the whole shebang, the whole process. Um, so that ultimately led me uh, down kind of that path of wanting to pursue that career. That's awesome, because yeah. I too wanted to be a cartoonist. Excellent. I would take a uh, post-it note and I would draw a little Pac-Man in the bottom right corner, and I would flip it sure. and make them meet the little dots and the ghosts. There you go. And also uh, comics, like Calvin and Hobbes and Garfield, those were also a big part of my childhood. So, um, you know, in some ways, comics mimic what animation is, so that was really kind of a big, big inspiration as well. Well, what was your first job? Now, that could be one you got paid to mow lawns, or it could be a real job. Sure. So, initially, my, my first job, I guess you would say, would be cutting grass. So, uh, my dad paying an allowance there. Um, so that was kind of my first experience with a paid kind of occupation. Uh, in terms of the first job that I got a paycheck for, uh, it was a high school job. Uh, I was working for a local flooring company. Uh, so basically what they had is a showroom filled with all sorts of flooring materials, including area rugs. And so it was my unfortunate responsibility to roll these things up, <laughs> unroll them for customers, um, you know, in the showroom. So very, very labor intensive, very tough job to have starting out. Did you have to take them outside and beat them to clean them every once in a while? I never did, but there was the unfortunate occasion, you know, we had them hanging up so they were easily to search for customers and they would come in and want to see them down on the ground and then they change their mind and it's got to go back up on the <laughs> shelf. So that was very, very common. So dealing with a lot of indecisive customers. Upper body workout yeah. quite yes, a bit. very much so. So did you have a favorite subject or hobby in school? Was it art related because of the cartoons? Uh, actually, believe it or not, I would say uh, English uh, writing actually eventually is what my cartooning interest uh, developed into. Uh, in some cases, I sort of thought of it as uh, still storytelling, just mm -hmm. using actually the words and the dialogue rather than the images. Um, so as I uh, progressed in grade school, high school, college, uh, my focus was more on language arts. Storytelling with images is a very difficult art. Absolutely. It really is. So now that we understand where you, the start of your career journey, what do you do today? And if you could walk us through how you got here. Sure. Any education or other jobs that prepared you for your current role? Absolutely. So right now I am uh, currently a guest manager at the American Sign Museum. Uh, so we currently deal uh, with guests coming in in the hundreds on a weekly basis, offering tours, um, and also educating people about the preservation and the history of signage. Um, so I got to this point largely because I was working with another local uh, nonprofit organization. They're called People's Liberty. They're a local grant-making organization, and they're very well connected around the city. Um, so one day we took a field trip to the American Sign Museum, just kind of enriching ourselves in what the city had to offer. And so that was my first exposure to this place, and I knew it was very special and knew that I wanted to get involved in some capacity. Um, so after my time with People's Liberty ended, I uh, started looking for applications and postings for this place. So I actually got started working with the events team. Um, in the evenings, we function as an event space, hosting parties, weddings, all sorts of things like that. So I started out helping out with those functions, and then uh, they saw that I had a really good aptitude for the history side and the presentation side of things. Um, so they transitioned me to the front desk, where I am now, giving tours and working with people on a regular basis. So. So if you would, for those of you who have not been to this museum, it's absolutely fantastic. It's gorgeous. It's amazing. And I don't know that just the pictures do it justice of what a great place this is. So could you give us a brief overview of the history of the museum absolutely. and what people would expect to see when they come here? Yeah, absolutely. So we've been an institution, the American Sign Museum, an institution for over 13 years, which really in the grand scheme of things is not that long in the life of a museum. Uh, we got started in 2005. Uh, all of all, all the pieces in our collection belong to one person, our founder. His name is Todd Swarmstedt. Um, so we like to say he officially started collecting around 1999. 
Um, he started out in a, a very small workspace in Essex Studios. It was about 4,000 square feet. I think I mentioned that was 2005, and very quickly outgrew that space. So they purchased this building in 2008, started renovating and expanding, uh, and it's pretty much uh, been, been pretty productive ever since. So he is committed to preserving uh, American signage. We have 100 years worth of signage history all the way from about 1890 to the late 1980s. Um, anywhere from pre-electric hand-carved signs, light bulb signs, neon signs, and even modern plastic signage. So the museum really kind of showcases that collection and helps connect it to uh, American history. And just visually, it's stunning walking Absolutely. through here because of all the neon and all of the reflective and all the stuff from the 50s with the Art Deco. Am I correct that you're, the process in which you walk through the museum takes you through the timeline and the, the way it evolved over Absolutely. time? Absolutely. So the museum was do designed in a way that you walk chronologically through those eras, uh, starting uh, with pre-electric, which is uh, basically any signage before 1890. Uh, you'll see some great examples of that. And as you make your way through the museum, uh, you'll progress through the following decades and uh, obviously the different technologies related to those as well. So very much is sort of like traveling through time. So what are, let's just say, three signs that either are really historic or really cool or have an interesting story behind them? Are there three that you would, or three or more? Sure, that you yeah. you would recommend? I, I mean, since my time being here, I've learned quite a bit about a lot of these signs. I do have some favorites. One of my most favorites is actually a uh, Chevrolet sign. It's the classic Chevrolet bow tie with the text going across the middle. Uh, it's from the very first Chevrolet dealership that was here in Cincinnati, wow. so it's pretty remarkable. But it has since actually led me to do a lot of additional research on my own into the history of that logo and kind of the mysteries around it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's something that I've really uh, spent a lot of extra time in developing and also sharing with people on the tour. So that Chevrolet sign is one of my favorites. The uh, next sign I would say that is probably one of my favorites to talk about is uh, the enormous McDonald's sign That's that we what have I was out there. <laughs> and this is one that you can definitely see in pictures if you ever look up on the museum. It's very popular. It's one of our most enormous uh, signs that we have from the early 1960s. And the reason why it's remarkable is because on one side, we've restored the neon to the way that it was in the 1960s. On the opposite side, we've left it the way that it was when it came to our collection in 2008. So it's kind of interesting to see the evolution of that sign front to back there. And it also gives you kind of an idea of how that industry has progressed and changed throughout the years. So really, really helps kind of ground it um, in something that a lot of people can relate to. So I like that sign for that reason. And then I would say my last favorite sign in the collection is uh, one that is probably not very popular, very easy to overlook. Uh, it is uh, what's known as a bubbler sign. Uh, basically what this is, is you've got hollow glass tubes with a liquid on the inside with a low boiling point. The light source behind the sign is enough to actually create bubbles that come up through the tubes and gives it almost kind of like a lava lamp effect. So it's a very interesting sign to look at. We don't really have any others like that one in our collection, so it's very unique. So I would say that one is probably one of my favorites as well. Super cool. Yeah. All right, before we move on to our next question, let's take a moment to hear from our sponsors. Do you enjoy your job and find it fulfilling? Or do you spend more time wondering what if instead of what's next? If so, contact Career Spa. Career Spa has extensive programs and curriculum and understands the challenges faced by individuals in transition. They can teach these success practices to be mastered for an effective job search. Answer that what if question by contacting Career Spa and asking their experts what's next. Contact Career Spa at careerspa.net. Talent acquisition is key to building a successful organization. Talent Connections is a professional services firm that specializes in recruiting, including executive search, contract recruiting, talent acquisition consulting, and recruitment process outsourcing. Whether you are an individual or a Fortune 100 company, Talent Connections can connect you with success. Contact them at talentconnections.net. Welcome back. We just learned what you wanted to be when you grew up and what you actually do today. So if you could do it all over again, would you do anything differently? I would say yes. Um, partly because my, my generation, my age group, unfortunately graduated into the recession that affected a lot of students my age. Um, I know it's very easy to put a lot of my career and financial woes on that, but some of it goes into the decisions that I was making in higher education. Um, so I really think that uh, if I could go back and do anything differently in higher education, I would maybe pick something uh, a little bit more generic um, rather than laser focusing on uh, an industry or a field that I was very, very interested in. Not that my time at college was, was ill spent. It was just, uh, I think coming out with a very specific degree is more challenging in this 
economy than coming out with something a little bit more general. Um, so if I had the chance to go back and do it again, I maybe would have done something in just like a general business degree or something of that nature. Um, that would make me, I think, a little bit more flexible, a little bit more versatile to deal with kind of some of the uncertainty and changes. Um, so really, that is the only thing that I could think of that I would really do differently. No, that's great advice. Sometimes I wish that I had done the same. Because I majored in music for a year, then I was a year behind when I decided to Sure. Switch, so. And it, it's great to study what you love. What you love. Um, I've found that I've been able to really expand on a lot of those things in my own personal time. Um, so in which case, you know, the, the extreme expenses that comes with a college education, you might as well just do something generic that you can really make do with. That would right. be my, my uh, thing that I would change for sure. So let's make the assumption that someone wants to do what you do. And how would you describe your job title? Yeah, um, so my official job title is a guest manager. Um, so I'm dealing face to face with a lot of the visitors that come into the museum on a weekly basis. Um, I'm also giving tours on a regular basis. So uh, giving this 45 minute presentation, the history, connecting it to American culture. Um, so that is kind of what I'm doing on a daily basis now. If someone was interested in getting into that position, uh, we have all sorts of volunteer opportunities here at the museum. We're a growing organization. Um, so we're always looking to work with uh, students or uh, other interns, things like that, who are interested in maybe getting some college credit, some experience to come in and try this out. It doesn't really take anyone special to learn this information. Uh, you really just kind of have to be passionate about it. So. And you have to have a pretty outgoing personality, I would imagine. I would agree, yeah. Having stage fright is, is not so good for giving tours. So <laughs> that is a, definitely a bonus there. So are there any current projects that you are working on or for the museum that you would like to mention? Uh, absolutely. So one of the things that we are really trying to work towards is becoming uh, an authority on signage. Um, so part of that uh, takes the shape in the form of uh, the tours that we give and also the presentation and exhibits that we have. Um, but we're also trying to expand into more like digital media. So specifically, one of the things we're working on is trying to capture the information we give in the tour in a short video series. Um, so this would allow people to explore the museum, interact with our displays, and learn um, you know, from any computer in the world, accessing it on, say, a YouTube channel, things of that nature. Um, but it really kind of opens up the doors to us to have interviews uh, with the founder um, and all sorts of different applications. So really that video series is something that I'm trying to help out with and help develop. That sounds awesome. Yeah. Nice. I know that you have a couple different spaces in the museum, and one of them looks like they restore neon signs. Is that correct? Absolutely. So here at the museum, we are actually the landlords for Neon Works, which is Cincinnati's only uh, repair restoration neon shop. Uh, they're very much few and far between nowadays. Um, but both Tom and Greg back there have been in the business for quite some time. They are experts in tube bending and creating and manufacturing these signs. Um, so really great guys to have around, especially when we need repairs for some of our authentic uh, neon signage. Uh, but you also get the opportunity uh, during the week at the end of our tours to go into the shop, get a live demonstration in the neon bending and the actual fabrication of these signs. So uh, it's a really great addition to the tour. Um, it also helps uh, anyone who's interested in this type of signage to understand a little bit more about them. And be sure to check out my Instagram at Greg Stanley LFO for pictures of not just the museum, but also the neon sign because it is a really cool area. And as with most journeys, success largely depends on reliable transportation. And since I'm a huge car guy, which plays in very well here, one of my favorite signs as I walk in is a fairly pedestrian sign. It is the DeSoto sign. Because when I see the DeSoto sign, I get all excited because there's car stuff in here. And there is a lot of car stuff in here along with a lot of other stuff. So can you tell our audience what was your first car? <laughs> right. Well, for better or for worse, uh, my first car was actually uh, purchased by my parents uh, it was a four-door Saturn sedan. It had the, the plastic body, if you remember right. those. Yep. Um, so not my very first choice, um, but it definitely was a great vehicle for getting around uh, to high school to and from and having you know um, all sorts of nonsense take place. So it was a great starter car. Uh, it was honestly a piece of junk. I'm very happy to, <laughs> to say that it is uh, behind me. Um, so uh, yeah, good memories about that, but uh, definitely not the most impressive first vehicle. Well, it's sure. recyclable. Exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Now, what is your dream car if you have one? Dream car, geez. So I am a, I'm a bit of an environmentalist nerd, so I would really love to get to a point where I could have a, a hybrid car or a mostly electric car. Um, I wouldn't really say I have a specific model or a brand that I'm really have in mind. Tesla's a little out of my price range. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, having a, a modern type of a hybrid car would definitely be something that I'd be looking towards versus like a, a really hot, nice muscle car. Okay, so, yeah. okay. Well, the Teslas are some of the fastest cars on the road. Sure. And they're coming down in price point a little yeah, bit. Yeah, absolutely. So. 
Well, one great perk to some jobs is a company car. And if I had all the money in the world, I'd love to buy you one. So I'm going to make a recommendation. And this is a little bit out there, as most of them are. So I'm going to recommend, based on your job, the Light Mobile. Okay. I'm guessing you never heard of it. Never heard of it. Okay. Why don't you so wait on me? This is, it's a mid-60s VW Beetle. You would probably remember this because it was pretty, it's actually pretty iconic. It's actually a piece of artwork. Okay. And it is covered with 1,659 bulbs. And this is in the 70s this thing was made. Yeah. That was computerized into 20 different patterns. Wow. It's put on by a guy named Eric Stoller in 1985. And if you want to see more about it, check out his book called Out of My Mind. But I will send you some pictures. It's really cool because it looks like Las Vegas on wheels, yeah. basically. And you would be a rolling billboard for this, <laughs> yeah. for this museum it, if this was your company car. It sounds like car. something we could park right in the museum and feature as one of our exhibits. It actually makes perfect sense, Absolutely. Honestly. Well, thank you so much for your time today and taking us on your career journey. What's the best way for our listeners to learn more about you or your company? Uh, you can go to our website. That's uh, www.americansignmuseum.org. Um, you can also uh, join our newsletter. If you ever stop in and uh, come into the museum, just write down your email address and you can stay up to date on uh, different monthly updates, things like that. Cool. Well, thank you so much, Jesse. All right. Thank you for having me. Thank you for listening to Learn From Others, where we help others succeed by sharing success. Where will our next adventure take us? Subscribe to find out. If you know of someone who has a cool career story or occupation, contact Greg through Instagram at Greg Stanley LFO. That's G-R-E-G-S-T-A-N-L-E-Y-L-F-O. And we will see you soon as we learn from others together.